Hi, this is Eric Martin with Board Game Geek. I'm here today looking at a cooperative game in which it's important to have cards in the right numerical order. And believe it or not, I am not talking about Wolfgang Varsh's The Mind, which I've already raved about a bit. I've written more than 3,000 words about it. I tweet about it. I push it on people at conventions. I love that game. I'm not talking about that game. And I'm not talking about the earlier The Game series by Stefan Bendorf and Reinhard Saup, in which you are also playing cooperatively and placing cards in numerical ascending and descending order. No, I have another design to talk about. Swiss designer Daniel Fair has a game coming from Lifestyle Board Games called Narabi. Three to five players, cooperative, place cards in order. How is this one different? Here are most of the components in Narabi. A set of cards, as you might expect from a game in which you place cards in numerical order. Cards have sleeves. I don't normally sleeve the cards, but you must sleeve them for this game, and I'll explain why as we start looking at how we play. Normally you shuffle cards and deal them out three to a player in a four-player game so that the other players can see all your cards. You don't have them all lined up in this grid, but since I'm explaining the game to you at home, I will show you what all the cards are. And you can see things more easily. Your goal in the Robbie is to get cards in numerical order, either in clockwise or counterclockwise fashion. You ignore the blanks when considering whether you get things in order. All you're worried about are the numbers. Zero, one, two, three, around to eight, or the other way. You have the cards laid out in front of you. Of course, if you just started swapping cards, that would be easy to swap things how you wish. And you're tracking how many turns in which you swap things. But of course, that's not much of a game, just picking up cards and moving them around. OK, it is a game, but that's Dutch Blitz. We're not looking at that here. No Robbie. Whoever has the zero becomes the start player for the game, and they are going to take one of their cards and they switch them with another player's card. But you are restricted in how you switch cards to the condition that is shown on the back of each card. And this is where the sleeves come in, because at the start of each game, you take a condition card, put it together with a number or blank card, and now you have a new combination for this game. So in this case, the zero can be switched with a card with the player on their right. The one can be switched with a number from two to six. The five can be switched with either the third card to the left or right. The conditions cover the grounds that you would expect them to. You can switch with a red or white card, with a card that's higher or lower, with a card that's two to the left or three to the left, or to the player to your left, player to the right, something that's between two and six, something that's higher than three. I have all these sort of conditions out there. One of them is you cannot switch. You cannot describe what the conditions are on your card. However, the rules do state that you can ask questions of other players and they can answer them yes or no. Can you swap this card with my zero? Yes or no? I don't know why you said yes or no. I have to figure it out based on what I have seen in the game. And every time you switch cards with someone, you can look at the new condition on the card that you just gained. So more information enters the game as it progresses and you get a better idea of which cards can go where. One card says you can swap this with anything. That becomes the magic traveling card that everyone hands around. Is it helpful or not? Well, that depends on what you're looking at on the board. As you make a move, you track it on the tracker here. So if I look at this, Maybe I, I don't do that. I will swap this. Let's give it some room. I have no idea what I'm doing. I've only looked at my cards. The player down here looks. Oh, I won't say why I'm doing this, but this is what I'm doing. Hmm. Now we have some framework in which to work. Zero, one. Three, four, six, seven, eight. That sort of looks good. If only other people can do other things. And that's two moves so far. Where do we go from here? It depends on what cards you have and what powers you have. And you can easily get yourself into a bind. This player with six, seven, eight thinks they're super clever by getting their cards in order. And now we're going to work to get everything else in order. But on a turn, you must swap something. And that means that six, seven, eight is going to be destroyed 
once that player takes their turn. You continue taking turns, track them on the board here, and ideally you don't take more than 24 turns because if you do, you fail. If you take only 20 to 24 turns, you're just horrible instead of a failure. This is your reward for doing something. We're good, we're well done, we're splendid. There's an overview of Norabi, which I play 10 times now on a review copy from Lifestyle Board Games with three and five players. This is a pre-production copy. I'm not sure what the final version will look like. I assume it will look pretty much like this because the design seems finished. There's a small difference between playing with three or four players or playing with five, because with five, you add a red nine to the game, you add a red and white blank of each color, and now you have all 15 condition cards in play. You know all the conditions that are out there, and now your challenge is to start with this tiny pool of knowledge, and you gain more knowledge every single turn, because you're looking at a new card, generally, and you see what that does, and you're putting it together with what else is out there. I know they have the six and they can move it with a blank. And so if I put a blank over in that spot, then that player can swap the six there, but I don't know if they want to do that. It's interesting because initially you start with so little knowledge, it's hard to do anything more than say generally, uh, I guess we should go clockwise. I don't know. You start making some moves and maybe you find out that's not possible. Oh, let's counterclockwise and you make a few other things. Oh, and then maybe you go back again. There's a hard mode where you can't ask questions at all. You can't talk, you can't say anything, you speak solely through actions. I have not tried this yet. It seems extremely difficult, and in many cases, we're only barely surviving to the horrible stage. So maybe we should get a little better and actually memorize all the possibilities of what the conditions are, and then we'll step it up. Another condition of the advanced game is that you can't immediately unswap something, which we have done many times as null moves. I may have an eight that says swap with a blank. So I do that and then I, the next player had that blank and now they swap it right back and hey, we've solved our six, seven, eight crisis. So the six, seven, eight stays in order and we kind of fudge things. But in the advanced game, you can't make an immediate swap back. There's a higher level of play. The game has been highly variable in terms of the starting conditions. We had one game end in four turns because things were almost in order to begin with. And you just swapped a few things, we're done. And other times it just goes on and on. We're just, how do we make this happen? And it doesn't seem possible. And we sort of figure out that this card can't be moved. And maybe the zero ended up with the condition where it has to be swapped with a lower number which means, oh, in this game also, zero cannot be moved, or a blank will get that, or eight gets something that's higher. And you get these restrictions on what you're doing. You can't swap with yourself, so if you get a card at the end that says swap with something two to the left or right, I can't move it over into my own space, so I can only pass that to my neighbor, who can then only pass it to me. So unless someone else takes that card, it's staying in this window. And so you're building up logic puzzle style, this framework of this is set and this has to be taken and this can only go here. And now we got to see if we can fit everything else up in here. It's a fascinating game that is not at all like the other cooperative games in which you put cards in numerical order. It's kind of amazing that you have this baseline description that seems like it should be done. It seems like how, how do these different games exist that have the same description and yet the feel of the games is very different for all of them here you're performing and then you know hopefully the other people don't mess it up and here you're all working together very closely and here you're all puzzling out because a lot of the information is in front of you and you can all see it and you can kind of get the idea as you're asking questions can you you can't swap that okay so let's work around that. And it's very puzzly and intense.